everyone. Welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking, where every day can be an adventure in your kitchen. And right now, sometimes the adventure, well, sometimes it's thrust upon you, if you know what I mean. Maybe you don't. So this is the holiday season. Everybody is busy out grocery shopping and Christmas shopping and whatever else. How many times has this happened to you? Oh, that was a long day. Uh-oh. Dinner. Where's the takeout menus? Yeah. So, I don't know how many times I am out grocery shopping and I have taken all day to do various errands and then grocery shopping and I get home and I forgot to think about what was for dinner that night. I was planning all of the rest of the week, but I didn't plan for the moment I got home. Now, the easy way to do it would be, of course, to call for takeout or something like that. However, what if I told you you could utilize your Instant Pot with frozen meat? You really can, and not just chicken, which a lot, there are a lot of frozen chicken recipes out there, but you can put frozen ground beef in your Instant Pot. So in this quick video, I'm gonna show you how to put it in your Instant Pot and what it looks like when it comes out and how to utilize it. That way, the next time you go out grocery shopping and you totally forget to do dinner, often, me, you can just throw some frozen ground beef in your Instant Pot and do what you want with it. So without further ado, let's get started. This is one of those things that you wanna tuck into your pocket for days whenever you are really, really busy and you just don't have time to do anything else because I have a ton of groceries to put away and think about feeding the rest of the household. So here's a great way that you can do ground beef in your Instant Pot. So I wanna make sure to let you know that this is not gonna be your typical ground beef because when you do it in a skillet, um, you actually get those browned bits in it. This is just gonna be cooked through and you can use it in anything. If you want those brown bits, a quick flash in the frying pan will get those brown bits on there, but you don't need it. That's just, I mean, yeah, brown is color, but this is still a fabulous hack. So here we go. All right, so first thing we're gonna wanna do is put our rack right inside, and then we're gonna wanna put a cup and a half of water in. I am so unprepared, I didn't even, measure anything out. I have nothing ready for this recipe. Nothing. Nothing. A clean kitchen. That's what I have. Now comes the hardest part of this recipe. So here I have two pounds of frozen beef. This came out of my deep freezer just a few minutes ago. I actually took it out, grabbed my cameras, and then threw it in the regular freezer while I got my cameras ready to go. Um, but it's pretty frozen solid. In fact, I'm getting frostbite now. Woo! Cold stuff, man. Maybe I should get some nitro gloves or something. Are those even a thing? Nitro? I'm thinking, I'm thinking of something else. So look at that. Frozen beef. Right in the pan. Now, some of the things that I could do with this, I'm still deciding. Honestly, I have no idea what I'm gonna do with brown beef that is browned. I could make spaghetti, um, which maybe I will, maybe I won't. Hmm. I could make soup. I could make burritos. I'll probably do some Googling just to see if I want to do anything that I haven't done before because that's where the adventure is. Woo! Cold stuff. Probably I'll make Korean beef. It's probably what I'm gonna do. Okay, that's it. So now seal our pot and now we're gonna set it for 26 minutes on high pressure. There we go. Now I'm gonna get this cleaned up, wash my hands, put away my groceries, and I'll be back to show you what else we're gonna do because I, I literally don't know what else I'm gonna do with this meat. I just know 
that I have things to do and this has started my cooking for me so I can do other stuff. So be right back. Well, hopefully I spoke loud enough because I forgot to plug in the microphone. Welcome to real life. So a quick Google during the break um, while this was cooking, um, I decided that I wanted to try a Thai rice bowl with ground beef and bok choy because I had bok choy in my refrigerator. Now, I've never cooked bok choy before. It actually came in an imperfect produce box. So this will be an adventure there too. However, this looks like a really, really easy recipe and I'm super glad that I Googled it up. So I will leave a link to that recipe in the comments below, but otherwise, here we go. Let's do this. So um, I went ahead and let my Instant Pot come down, natural pressure release, and now I'm just going to open it up. So as you can see inside, our meat is, ah, it's fine. I mean, it's just hunks of meat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out and put it right inside my wok. Because I'm actually gonna use my wok in just a moment. Let's get that out of the way. Oh, I, let's make sure we don't cook all of this. I'm going to reserve back one of these pounds of meat for tacos later this week. This recipe is just for one pound. So good thing I remembered that. That would have been a sad mistake for my tacos. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just going to break up the meat with anything. If you have to mix and chop, that would be a great way to mix it up. In fact, maybe I will do that. We use the tools we got. All right, so now we're just gonna give this a little mix with our mix and chop. And the only reason we're putting it in a skillet again is because we want to make marry the sauce all together. And this will give us an opportunity to get some of those brown bits on this meat. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on to high. I'm sorry, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on to medium, medium high. Oh, this thing rattles so much. I don't know if it's the pan or what it is, but we'll let that start to warm up while, oh, and we're gonna squirt a little oil in there. just to help coat it when we get the rest of our stuff in there. All right, so let's combine this sauce together. So here we have some chili paste, some fish sauce, some sugar, some red pepper flakes, some soy sauce, and some garlic. And we're just gonna give that a little mix together. Look how beautiful that is. We're going to get it right into the pan. All right, and I'm going to save this bowl because that's where I'm going to put this in just a second. All right, I'm going to use my tongs and I'm going to give this a little stir. And we're already almost done. So the other thing I did while we were gone is put away groceries first. But I also went ahead and put some rice in my other Instant Pot. So we will have rice with this awesome rice bowl because you need rice. But you can definitely use leftover rice. Um, in fact, if I had had any leftover rice, that's obviously what I would have done. So that's it. We just want to do it for about one to two minutes because we already have cooked beef. There's no reason to recook it. So let's go ahead and drop that down in there and we are going to hit this wok again with some oil and then we are going to do our bok choy so i'm just going to drop my bok choy in and we're just going to move it around all right i don't know how to tell when bok choy is done, but I assume when it's a little wilty. Huh. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit it with some salt. And it didn't say how much, it just said some salt. So we'll hit it with salt. 
Alright, and I'll place a piece of bok choy. Oh, mmm. Okay, let's go ahead and get that off. Did I turn it off? Yep. That's it. Now let's assemble. All right, and here I have some of that rice that I instant potted at the same time. This is the Calrose rice. I put it in the instant pot with the right amount of water for six minutes and came out with the most beautiful rice ever. All right, we'll put our once frozen ground beef on our meal right here. All right, and then we will put some carefully placed bok choy right over on the side. And then some of our final touches, some fried egg. I did fry those up real quick as well. So we're gonna set the fried egg right on top. So we'll put some ball chili paste all over. And wow, look at that. That is not bad for not knowing what I was gonna do for dinner a little over 35 minutes ago. Look at that beautifulness. The real question is how she tastes. After how she looks. <laughs> All right, well, let's check it out. So, the egg should be pleasant in the middle. Ready? Ready to see? Oh, look at that beautiful egg. If you don't like over easy eggs, you can obviously cook yours a little harder, but I like over easy eggs. All right, here we go. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> whew, it's spicy all right, but wow, there's some really good flavors in there. Oops, I forgot a piece of bok choy. There are some really good flavors in there. You could definitely taste. Mmm, 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 mmm. You can definitely taste the garlic and the fish sauce in a very good way. Wow, okay, this is pretty awesome. Wow. Um, I almost feel like I want to go ahead and do another batch of this because I'm pretty sure that everyone in my house will like it. I only made a small batch for the couple of people that are here right now, but I can almost guarantee that this will be a crowd pleaser for everyone in my house. All right, that is super good. Mm. And the meat is not chewy, has a very awesome texture. I don't know, there's nothing wrong with this meal at all. I am so thrilled. I love Googling adventurous things. You guys, that's really good. I am super, I, this is a good recipe. This is a recipe I will keep for years to come. All right, you guys, if you enjoyed that video, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. I do videos several times a week, and right now we are venturing in all things holiday related. This happens to be holiday related because we're all busy. We all need to make some shortcuts, yet we don't want to sacrifice taste, right? Right. All right, you guys, well, we'll see you next time. Bye. Before I turn it off, I'm gonna eat some more. Because the moment I turn it off, the vultures come in and they're like, hey, what's for dinner? That smells good. And then, Mmm. That's a keeper of a recipe.